Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Programming and Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be a continuation on our series of Access SQL, or SQL language. More specifically, today we're going to be talking about the in operator as part of our WHERE clause. So let's go ahead and go back to our database here. And you can see that this is where we left off last when we were doing our like statement. But now, as part of our WHERE clause, following the value that, or the uh, field that we're going to be looking up, I'm going to put in as the new operator. Now, immediately after the in operator, you need to, to put uh, your values inside of parentheses. So you'll see that I'm going to put parentheses right after my in statement. And then inside of these parentheses, I'm going to actually specify the values that I'm going to be looking for. So I'm going to look for doe and kerth. Okay. Now you'll notice that I'm using comma separated value notation here. So there's a comma between my doe value and kerth value. You'll also notice that my doe and kerth are surrounded by quotation marks. That's because the last name field is a text field. And just to look that up here, if I open up my employees in the design view, yes, I want to open it anyway, you'll see it is short text. Okay, so the last name is short text. Whenever you're dealing with text and you're specifying a value inside your query, you need to make sure that that uh, text value that you're looking for is surrounded by quotation marks. Now, one thing to be aware of here is what if your uh, value that you're looking for has a quotation mark inside of it. And I know it's kind of small, you can't really tell, but I have a quotation mark here between my DO and S. Okay, so I got quotation mark, DO, quotation mark, S, quotation mark. That will confuse access. So if I try to run it, it's going to say syntax error, missing operator, and query expression. So there's a problem here. And the way you take care of that is you can actually surround your uh, value with apostrophes instead of quotation marks. And now when I try to run this, it runs just fine. But since I don't have anybody with the last name of doe quotation mark s, it's not going to come back as a value. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this. Now, what if this was an apostrophe? Well, you can use quotation marks again to surround your value. So now doe apostrophe s is a perfectly valid uh, word to be looking up. All right, let's go ahead and drop the apostrophe s here from our values, and you'll see that when I run this, it's going to return the Jane Doe and the Stan Kurth, because one of the values that we were looking for was Doe in the last name, and one of the values we were looking for was Kurth in the last name. And essentially what we've done with this in statement is we've specified two values that we're looking for. It's either this or this. So I could actually write this out in a very similar way to this, equals do or table one employees last name equals kerth. Okay, but you can see this is much longer, and really we can just continue to keep adding on to this. Table one employees last name equals bishop. And you can see this is getting longer and longer and longer and more and more complicated. Uh, it's going to be a little harder to, to track down what there might be an error you know, if you had an error in your in your query, this would be a little bit more complicated to try to look through. So instead, we can do that in operator and kind of shrink it all down to just one nice, simple little statement here. Do kerth. And even if I did bishop. Okay. So there we go. There's our comma separated values for our in, and there's the three values that uh, the three records that we should return. Okay, great. Now there's another thing that you can do with the in operator, which is very, very handy. Let's say that the values you wanted to compare were in another table. So here we've got table one contacts, and I can see that my name here is one of the contacts. Okay, so what if I wanted to get any record that is in the table one employees where the last name is also found in table one contacts. Well, I could do a join statement. That's perfectly acceptable and probably a little bit more uh, what you should do. 
However, there is another thing you can do, and that is as part of your in operator, you can actually do a whole other select query. Oops, this isn't table one employees, this is table one contacts. From table one contacts, where, well, I don't even need a where statement. I could just go ahead and leave it that way because it's going to look through for, uh, for the last names. I've got Bishop, Gilbert, Lane, and Lane. But if we look at our employees table, the only one that matches there is Bishop. So I should only return this one value from our table one employees. If I run it, sure enough, there's only one record. So we're actually able to look inside of the table one contacts list here and find a value that matches something for the last name in our table one employees. So it's kind of a, a handy way to kind of look from one table and reference to another table. Now one thing to note here is that as part of our select statement, I am only grabbing one field. Okay, if I tried to grab another field, say, uh, let's say middle name. Okay, so if I tried to do table one contacts middle name, this is going to cause an error. And it's going to say you have written a subquery that can return more than one field without using the exists reserved word in the main queries form, uh, from clause. Revise the select statement. Okay. So it's talking about subqueries, and that's something that we will be getting into because subqueries are a very, very handy way of comparing data from one table uh, and comparing it against another table. So that's definitely something we are going to want to do. But you can kind of get a taste of this here with the in operator where we can look at the last name values that are returned from the table one contacts and see anywhere where that matches the last name for a table one employees. Okay, so that's something that you may want to use. Uh, I hope that this has been informative to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave your question in the comments below. And I or someone else from the community will be happy to answer it for you. Also, if you have a suggestion for a video you'd like to see, I can't guarantee that I will get to it, but I will tr definitely try, especially some of the better ones. Um, and again, if you have any questions that you want to relate directly to me, just go ahead and send me a message on YouTube, and I'll be happy to take care of it. Thank you.